Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. X-Men First Class Movie Thoughts. Okay, so at the very beginning you see basically the first scene of X-Men just recast, you know, new actors. Basically the same scene. And then that leads into Shaw as a Nazi. At first I seriously thought that was supposed to be, you know, Mengele or something. You know, and he talks about how, you know, it's all in the genes. I was terrified that they were going to make like a... to basically say, you know, and then Magneto took on the Nazi ideals, because, you know, that's really not what Magneto is, not in the other films. And I admit to not have read that much of the comics, but as far as I understand the character there, not there either. It is, you know, he's driven by pain, and he is certain that one people will govern over another, and since he is a mutant, and since he feels superior, he wants it to be mutants that are above. You know, it's kind of, if you're certain that either your group of people or another group of people is going to dominate the other, then you want your own group of people to be the one dominating, obviously. Now after that, we get the distinctly awkward appearance of a naked mystique as a child. I don't know what exactly they thought, but just nobody wants to see that. Well, a small group of the population want to see that, and yeah, I'm just gonna... Okay, moving on. The movie does have the same problems as the other X-Men movies, basically with, you know, too many characters and too many mutants. I didn't really see that much of a point to having Darwin in here. You know, he's basically there just to be sacrificed. I have a feeling that it's because it's Fox. You know, someone at Fox heard Darwin is in this movie. Did you kill him? You know, I don't know. Maybe. And it also seemed kind of... The bad guys in these movies are just really bad at recruiting, you know, they have, like, very, very low, you know, very bad results with the whole recruiting thing, you know, it's, oh, who of you want to join me? You? Am I seeing any other hands? I'm not seeing any. Okay, let's go. Azazel? Yeah, just, you know, and obviously everybody knew that you know, it was, it's a trap. They were going to, you know, try to attack them or something when, you know, Darwin went over there. At first I thought that, you know, Shaw was actually stupid enough to fall for that, but, you know, obviously he wasn't. And it was a pretty cool death of Darwin. Speaking of stupid, if Magneto is determined to get to Shaw, then why exactly does he kill two people who have ideas, you know, who know about, who might know his whereabouts without doing anything? Wasn't the point of finding those two, you know, former Nazis to get some information? Maybe it was just vengeance, I don't know, but personally I might have tried for just a little bit. He, he clearly wasn't averse to torture to get information, you know, I... Whatever. I liked the scene. I will say that. It was really good how, you know, was, oh, what's your name? We don't have a name. It was taken away by, you know, pig farmers and tailors, I think. Yeah. That was pretty good. And some of the uses of powers were also quite good. I didn't really see why the chick with wings needed to be in this movie at all. You know, whether or not she's in the comics, I'm just saying she really didn't add a lot to the movie other than being, you know, the sole recruit there. That was, um... I thought it was okay that we found out how Xavier lost the use of his legs. And I like that that was what stopped Magneto, you know. 
that that was, he was determined to kill all these people with the missiles, you know, and the one time, the one thing that stops him is Xavier being injured, you know, and their little fight against each other, you could really tell neither of them wanted to hurt the other, they just wanted, they were determined, you know, one was determined to kill, the other was determined to save. And, you know, it's also very well expressed in Mystique's line, I realize you never wanted to be against the world, you always wanted to be part of it. That expresses it brilliantly. That is exactly the Xavier versus Magneto ideological battle, you know. Having this whole thing tie in with the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think it kind of works. And let's be honest, if there were mutants in that particular situation, the governments wouldn't tell the people. For one thing, it would just, you know, it, it would add to tensions. It would probably seem like the witnesses were all insane. And, you know, they just say, they declared high treason to report anything about any of the mutants. I thought that there were maybe times where Xavier could have used his telepathy and didn't. Okay, so he can't find Shaw using, you know, because Shaw wears the dorky looking helmet. You know, it's, it's kind of, you know, he puts it on and says, okay, what am I thinking? I was half expecting her to say, you're thinking that you look ridiculous and you should take that thing off instantly. Oh wait, that's what everybody else is thinking. Seriously, and it only got worse when Magneto put it on. I'm not even, it wasn't the only bad thing about his outfit there at the very end. You know, the red suit, that was just horrible looking. And then we've got the helmet. Am I wrong? Please tell me I'm wrong. Did I see horns on that helmet? I saw horns on that helmet, didn't I? That just... People are trying to forget that that was in the comics, okay? We don't need quite that obvious of a... It's, it's supposed to be ambiguous, you know? It's just... Anyway... So there were too many mutants, and some of them really didn't need to be there. I thought Banshee was kind of okay. And the whole flying thing it worked out. It was definitely well shot. The flying was pretty effective. It's the most impressed I've been with flying scenes in a recent movie since Iron Man 1. So that's pretty good. I like the cameos. I'm not sure the adult Mystique one was necessary. But the Wolverine one was just spot on. It, it just... It couldn't have been any better. If, if they were determined to put a Wolverine cameo in there, that was it. That was just exactly how to do it. I like that we saw Beast's, you know, first his ordinary form and then later when he grows more. In the comics, I believe he was always big and then the blue fur came from a failed experiment. In this, the failed experiment also makes him bigger. I thought that worked okay because it made for that whole kind of he can hide kind of thing and he couldn't originally. I liked the whole Jekyll and Hyde thing there was to that. That was clearly very intentional and they admitted, you know, they, they come right out and mention that movie at least like twice or something. Book. Him, you know, jabbing it in there with very little reaction for having stabbed himself in the foot. And then, you know, at first it seemed to work, but then, you know, his foot grows and we see, you know, we, see, we end up seeing the reflection. And then we see the destruction he's wrought, you know, very Hyde-ish. And then he comes in, you know, nice big entrance, silhouetted, big lights behind him. And Mystique says, this is how you're supposed to be. You know, that was really good. And, you know, seeing his strength also, I did think the running scene with Xavier made him seem more like he was supposed to be the Flash. That was kind of stupid. I think the training for him should have been 
and not so much speed, but the acrobatics, you know, see him, you know, just command a jungle gym or something, you know, just some kind of thing like that, more along the lines of what they did in X-Men 3. That would have fit better, I would say. I thought they took it a little far with Xavier being very different from, you know, the partying and him over and over repeating that line, you know, of, you know, oh, but mutation is a good thing, it's enabled us to evolve. Yeah, we heard that twice in the first two movies. We've heard it. Just no more. early Cerebro was cool enough, you know, and seeing Xavier use Cerebro for the very first time. I will say the movie definitely tried to squeeze too much into too short a space of time and too short a movie. The movie's length was pretty appropriate. I like how... I, can, I would kind of liken it to a spy movie, like a Bond flick that just happens to have mutants for agents. Some of the agents, anyway with this kind of, you know, we discover who the bad guy is and we get an idea of the plan and then it's trying to figure out where to defeat them, when to defeat them, how to defeat them. I thought it worked quite well with Shaw as the bad guy because genuinely did not know how he would be defeated, you know. And the coin, you know, the repeat of the line at the count of three, the, you know, I will move this coin. And you can tell from the camera work that Xavier feels that pain, you know, of the coin going through. And Magneto gets his revenge. And this whole thing, you know, that worked quite well. But it tries to have Xavier and Magneto really bond, you know, almost be brotherly. That doesn't happen until near the end of the film, I would say. I did not feel like they were like brothers until we saw them playing chess. And then, I don't know, 20 minutes later, they've stopped being friends. Okay, they were supposed to be friends for considerably longer than that. And even just taking the movie, well, a couple of weeks, months, maybe. Yeah, I, I just don't see how it really covers the amount of time that it seems like it should for that, you know. And then we have, you know, Xavier discovering all the mutants and the, you know, training the first team and such. It should have, you know, been a longer amount of time, covered a longer amount of time, not been so rushed. I was kind of disappointed when they started introducing a bunch of more mutants. I thought it was basically going to, going to be Xavier, Beast, Magneto, and Mystique against, you know, Shaw and his, what, three mutants, you know. P.S. Emma Frost, it's just so fiery hot. They, they did great on that. Really sensual. I suppose that's it. When the missiles did not hit the boats, you know, when Magneto sends them most of the way back and then stops because Xavier gets hit, did anybody else notice how, you know, all the soldiers are basically, you know, cheering like, yes, we made it. Look at Michael Ironside's face. You know, he's got like someone else's hand on his shoulder and he starts to sort of glare towards him like he's thinking, Okay, you're not asking, I'm not, I'm not asking, you're not telling, but just get that hand away from me, you know, just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Was anybody else feeling like maybe Shaw was sending a little bit of mixed messages when he was talking to Magneto, you know, down there in the nuclear chamber of the boat, you know, he's like... I'm really impressed with your powers, and I would love to have you as my ally. <laughs> okay, dude, beat him or try to sway him over to your side. Make up your mind. That just, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, near the end of the scene, Magneto actually starts fighting back, but long before that, Shaw is, you know, tossing him against the walls in the typical, I'm the villain and you're supposed to survive this scene, so I'm not actually going to hurt you in any kind of real way, this is just for dramatic tension kind of thing, you know. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box.